Hi everyone, welcome back to my new model Barmy channel. Uh, so I've been doing a bit of scale modelling. Um, so apologies to my railway subscribers, uh, you'll have to wait for a further instalment. Uh, but for those of you that like my scale models, uh, I've been building some very tiny armour again. Uh, so I had a, um, a kit that I wanted to um, put on the bench, so I needed to get my hand back in uh, with some armour. So I decided in the interim to build this little Fox Scout car. It's from uh, Flames of War, it's from their Team Yankee series, 1 to 100th scale. So there we go, that's a pound coin to give you an idea of the size of this little fella. Uh, very simple kit, uh, nicely detailed, um, and it was probably more about the paint job on this one. Uh, so yeah, I'm pleased how this one turned out. Uh, so the reason I built this was because I had something else on the bench that I wanted to uh, get back into uh, practice. So this is what I wanted to build next, which is a an Airfix Scorpion tank, which is a very, very old kit, one that I've been trying to track down. Uh, quite difficult to get hold of, very expensive for what it is, uh, but a very, very good friend of mine kindly tracked one down and gave this to me for my birthday. Um, so let's see how we got on. Right, I'll spare you the uh, boredom of watching plastic halves being glued together. Um, I'm sure you all know how to uh, follow instructions. So we'll get straight into the sort of basic sub-assemblies now that I've built them up. Um, like all of these old Airfix kits, uh, they are a bit of a challenge. Um, they don't fit together particularly well in parts. And obviously the moulds are getting on a bit as well now. So let's have a look at the tracks first and the road wheel assemblies. Now, the big problem with these old Airfix rubber tracks is that they are very, very difficult to put on and get them to stay put. Uh, so I thought I'd assemble these before I start painting. Now the uh, idler wheel uh, and all the road wheels are fine uh, as long as you set them up so they're nice and straight and let them go off before you tackle the tracks. It's the dry sprockets that are the nightmare on this because they just don't, the, the drive cogs don't fit into the tracks. Also, once you've actually fitted the tracks, you can't actually get the top hull to fit. So what I've had to do is actually, have, I've had to remove uh, some of the tracks at the top where they won't be seen on the drive sprocket. Um, now, moving on to the top half of the hull, you'll see here that this sort of mud flap assembly will partially cover the um, drive sprocket. So you won't actually see where I've not been able to join the tracks together. Um, you get the options in the kit of building this as either a scorpion or a scimitar. So I've decided to build it as a scimitar, as a Desert Storm uh, scimitar. Uh, and in fact, uh, fairly early on in the Scorpion and scimitar life, they actually got rid of, like, largely didn't run them with these side mud flaps. Uh, but usefully, I'm gonna keep them on because it hides the fact that I've not been able to join the, um, the tracks. So, Quite a simple kit really in, in its number of parts. I've added some detail, so all of these little bits and pieces that I put on the on the sides here are all from my spares box. Um, looking at pictures of uh, Gulf War scimitars, they pretty much hung anything and everything off the side of these vehicles um, because they obviously needed to uh, provide enough equipment and support to sustain themselves on that on the very quick thrust forward which obviously these light reconnaissance vehicles, that was their speciality. So moving at speed, um, so they needed to have enough kit that they weren't um, so dependent upon replen, they could uh, they could sustain themselves. Um, this is the first time I've had a go at this camouflage netting like this as well. So this is Milliput. So uh, it's Milliput that I've used a, a dental probe to literally just poke lots and lots of holes in. It's the first time I've used this technique, so it'd be interesting to see once I've painted it, uh, how it looks. Um, thankfully, uh, Mrs. Pierce is in orthodontics, so I do end up with uh, a, f a few bits of time expired 
dental instruments which are jolly handy for modeling um, which I'm sure most of you already uh, know and probably possess some dental uh, tools um, so moving on to the turret once again uh, I've added some camouflage netting um, I had some resin spares as well uh, of accessories so these uh, sort of rolls of, uh, of, of pack and canvas and tarpaulin extra um, storage on the side of the turret uh, this folded up piece of canvas that is going to be uh, an identification uh, panel they carried sort of orange and yellow ident panels so they could be recognized from the air to to avoid a sort of blue and blue uh, contact uh, so that's, uh, that's that was useful it was in my spares box and I thought yeah uh, that will work uh, I've modeled the gunner's hatch closed commander's hatch open uh, drilled out the gun barrel as well um, so yeah I'm, I'm happy with uh, with how that looks so far I've also liberated uh, a couple of uh, crew so this once again was from my Rocco mini tanks accessories pack these are actually 187 figures but they work okay so I've got a driver figure and a commander figure uh, ready to be painted up so uh, I think the next step uh, probably will be um, uh, a spray of uh, black primer right well it's had a coat of uh, rattle can uh, matte black uh, just to prime it and I've just uh, put the hull and chassis together I've not glued it yet because I'll still spray that separately um, I just wanted to see what it would look like all together in one piece so I'm pretty happy with the uh, the way that's looking um, as I'm going to be doing this sand yellow in the sort of desert scheme I like to prime in black because when I then apply the sand yellow if I don't go too heavy with it you do get some nice shadowing um, from the black underneath um, so that's what I'm hoping that I'll be able to achieve on this um, so yeah so next stage I guess is uh, a spray a coat of um, sand yellow okay so we've now given it a coat of uh, sand yellow which I've sprayed fairly thinly over the black which means that you do get a little bit of shadowing um, which helps me with my weathering because some of that is essentially partially done so uh, the next phase will be to break out the hairy sticks um, I've probably finished with the spraying now so everything from now on will be brush painted apart from perhaps the last coat of uh, matte varnish so I shall pick out the detail now uh, of all the various accoutrements hanging off this um, scimitar tank one slightly worrying development I don't know whether you can see there but the tracks I think due to their age possibly um, have developed some cracks so I've hopefully um, addressed that by putting a little bit of sio on them so a little bit of super glue over the cracks um, to try and stop them from actually um, fracturing even further and separating the tracks so hopefully that has resolved that but I should be keeping my eye on that um, other than that happy with uh, progress so far so uh, yeah as I say next step be uh, painting some of the detail right so I've uh, finished all the uh, basic painting now so I've picked out all the detail that I want to pick out um, and yeah happy with this I think my next step will be to weather it so I shall weather it with a uh, probably oils I'll do an oil wash uh, and then I might just do some highlights with some white oil paint uh, dry brushed over the whole thing um, so yeah happy with that so far so we'll take a look at it once i've applied the wash so here we are then all finished um yeah pretty pleased how this turned out um it's my interpretation of a uh, desert storm scimitar so um rivet counters need not apply uh, but i hope you like it nevertheless uh an oldie and a goodie this kit 
uh, indebted to my mate Nige, who found me the kit and very kindly gave this to me for my birthday. So thanks, mate. Hope you're all happy how this turned out. Uh, crew a little bit under scale, because Scorpion and Scimitar not a big vehicle, so the 187th figures look a little bit small in there. Uh, and then my obligatory um, shot with the Tamiya glue in the background just for scale. So thanks for joining me, and uh, please uh, like and subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Cheers.